What's going on, everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about how Brazil is becoming a leader in crypto adoption here inside of South America. So there's a lot going on here about uh, crypto in Brazil. So we're going to unpack this all. But yeah, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section and check out my channel link in the description. Marcellus Travels if you want to see my travels out here inside of Brazil. So let's get started. And for disclaimer, I am an American. I'm from America, but I'm here traveling inside of Brazil. And there's actually some crypto adoption going on here in Brazil. And that's why I want to talk about this. So let's talk about this. First of all, we got to talk about what Bolsonaro, the uh, previous president, did before leaving office and handing it over to Lula. So Brazil legalizes crypto payments, setting the stage for greater Bitcoin adoption. Now, I touched up on this yesterday, but I didn't go into it fully. So let's go into this. So Jair Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, has signed a bill that legalizes and regulates Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a payment option in the country. So Bolsonaro signed a bill into law that established the country's official and complete framework for the trading and use of virtual currencies in Brazil per the federal government's official journal. So now this is pretty much making it legal to use Bitcoin or whatever crypto you want as a payment. So down here it says the bill previously approved by Congress was signed on Wednesday and published on Thursday. So this was previously a few weeks ago. So they said the purpose of this law is a digital representation of value that can be traded or transferred by electronic means and used to make payments for or for investment purposes and is considered a virtual asset. So it pretty much says that these digital and virtual currencies are able to be used as electronic payments as a form of value. So it's a virtual asset is pretty much what they're considering it as. So you can trade one virtual asset for a physical asset, you know, taking and trading crypto for real estate or something like that here inside of Brazil. So that's pretty much what this entails. Now, it also says down here, and shout out to all the Brazilians out there watching this, but uh, it says down here, therefore, this does not include national and foreign currencies, electronic currencies, instruments that provide certain benefits and services such as points and rewards from loyalty programs and securities and financial assets. So they're pretty much saying this does not mean that you can legally tr trade the Chinese yuan or yuan or whatever you want to call it here in Brazil. You can't do any of the electronic currencies and all that, but you can use the virtual assets and they have described them as stuff like what? Bitcoin. And then they say over here, virtual asset providers, which is VASP, are defined as entities that execute on behalf of third parties, at least one of these services. And they say exchange between virtual assets and national or foreign, current or foreign currencies or between one or more virtual assets. And they say transfer of virtual assets or custody or administration of virtual assets or of instruments that enable control over these assets. And they say the participation in financial services and an offering of services related to the offer by an issuer of the state or the sale of virtual assets. So that's pretty much what classifies as a virtual asset. You can't just use a digital, you know, uh, electronic currency for like a foreign country, like the Chinese yuan or something. But anyways, Chinese yuan, I don't think it's yuan. They say over here, the document added that virtual asset service providers may only operate in the country with prior authorization from a federal administration body or entity. And guess what the first one to receive this license is? Well, the first company to receive this license to operate in Brazil is Crypto.com. So Crypto.com receives a license as a payment institution in Brazil. So Crypto.com is really pioneering this. But uh, we're going to go over the Crypto.com thing here in a second. But we're going to continue to go over this um, inside full. Okay, so they say Brazil's residents will not be able to use crypto assets as legal tender. In the country so it's not a legal tender but you could use it as a form of payment they said when it comes to illegal acts involving crypto the bill stated that the per uh, perpetrators would be punished with fees and up to eight years in prison so they will be punishing people for doing illegal stuff with crypto they said the penalty will be increased from one third to two thirds if the crime defined in this law are committed repeatedly throughout a criminal organization so they're really gonna you know, hone in on that. And they said the new law will go into effect 180 days from the date of its official publication. Now, they said the Central Bank of Brazil and the Securities and Exchange Commission 
known as the CVM, are expected to work together on overseeing the market. And they say down here, as reported in earlier in December, Brazil's central bank published a resolution that created in um, a working group pretty much focused on tokenization. And they say there are some risks in all this good stuff. But down here, this is what I really want to show you because when I came into Brazil, I flew in through Latam Airlines, which is an airline created and established in Brazil. It's a Brazilian airline. So they say, Alice Adelman, the CEO and co-founder of Bitcoin, rewards uh, app Loli, so it's a rewards app called Loli, said in a comment shared with Crypto News, Brazil's move to regulate Bitcoin as a payment mechanism sets the stage for greater Bitcoin adoption in the country and Latin America at large. That's why I'm saying that they're pioneering the crypto movement and crypto adoption inside of Latin America and inside of South America specifically. Because you could say, oh, yeah, um, El Salvador, you know, is Latin America. Well, we do have to talk about something because let's look up El Salvador for a second here. So let's go to El Salvador. People are saying that El Salvador is um, inside of, you know, South America. So what I will say is El Salvador is considered Central America. It's still Latin America because it's still a, a Latino country. It's still a Spanish country, but it is not South America. El Salvador is Latin America. Or it's Latin America, but it's in Central America. You know, Latin America, I would pretty much say, goes all the way from Mexico all the way down here to Argentina. Like all the Spanish-speaking countries from Mexico down there is Latin America. But El Salvador is Central America, not South America. So Brazil is one of the leading factors here for crypto in South America. But when it comes to Latin America, so far El Salvador is taking over for Latin America. I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to kind of hone in on that because a lot of people kind of get the two mistaken. Like Central America is not South America. Central America is much different than South America. It's still Latin America, but it's not South America. I just wanted to get that correct. But anyways... They say over here, per Adelman, um, crypto adoption in Latin America continues to rise, going up by 40% in 2022. A major part of the reason the CEO suggests is inflation. So a lot of people are really coming for uh, crypto. A lot of people are trying to get in on crypto. A lot of these governments are because their currencies are so heavily inflated. I mean, Venezuela, for uh, for instance, like they were using the U.S. dollar, but it's, I would say if they use crypto, that would also be pretty good as well. But anyways, it says over here, a major part of the reason the CEO suggests is inflation, which grew in this region as it's fat at a fast pace in over 15 years at an average of 19%. So Argentina and Venezuela have seen many of their citizens turning to crypto, given that despite the volatility, Bitcoin has increased in value while these countries' fiat currencies continue to depreciate. So even though Bitcoin is down, it's still doing better than their, their currency. They're still doing better than the Venezuelan currency, which they don't really use. Still doing better than Argentina ones, which are saying. And then also down here, they said the CEO of that company, Adelman, argued that inflation is a key factor driving demand for crypto as a payment in Brazil. And I have been experiencing inflation here in Brazil. So I hear a lot of um, Brazilians talk about this as well. There's a lot of inflation going on here. Like a lot of stuff is starting to get really expensive. And they said countries with significantly higher inflation than Brazil have an equal, if not greater, potential to benefit from crypto and from Bitcoin. So the CEO also explained that Brazilian inflation stood at just over 6%, while over 100 countries in the world are seeing much higher inflation. So yeah, Brazil is just at 6% year by year, but a lot of countries are experiencing a lot more. And then down here, you can see, therefore, Brazil's neighboring countries may decide to follow. So Brazil is the leading factor right now for Latin America inside of uh, South America, specifically for crypto adoption. And they say down here, therefore, Brazil's neighboring countries will follow as one of the largest economies in the world and a trader leader, trade leader in Latin America. Brazil's want use of Bitcoin as both a store of value and a medium of exchange also just suggests that neighboring economies will soon adopt the laws. And I'm inside of Sao Paulo right now. Sao Paulo is literally the financial hub of South America. It's not the financial hub of just Brazil. It's the financial hub of South America. All South Americans come to Sao Paulo for that work, right? Because Sao Paulo is the New York of South America, New York of Brazil and South America. And actually, if you look at it, it has the highest GDP here inside the Southern Hemisphere. It's a huge city, 23 million people. Like, 
it's a huge economy here. And um, I have seen, I, I want to say I've seen some Bitcoin ATMs here, but I can't 100% recall where they were, but I would have to you know, find them. But anyways, he argued that countries that have large unbanked populations would benefit from using Bitcoin, which would definitely help in more rural areas here inside of uh, Brazil. But anyways, this is pretty much what I got, and this is pretty much what I want to talk about now. Crypto.com receiving a license as a payment institution in Brazil as a whole nother thing in itself. Like, that's huge. Like, before any of these other crypto companies could get licensed as a payment institution here, Crypto.com got licensed first. So this is huge. So the company is the first crypto exchange to become a licensed payments institution in a South American country. That's big. And now um, down here it says Crypto.com has obtained that license. And down here it also says a license allows the company to continue offering regulated fiat wallet services in the country where the Crypto.com Visa card has been available since 2021. And yeah, people actually do use the card out here. I've seen it personally. And then down here it says Brazil in the entire Latin American Latin America market is a significant region in the pursuit of our vision of cryptocurrency in every wallet. So that's definitely pretty big. Latin America is a major driver in crypto adoption and regulators have also been playing a key role in this. So that's very good. In November, Brazilian payments company Cloudwalk was the first crypto firm to obtain a payment institution license by the country's central bank. Crypto.com now becomes the first exchange thus licensed. So that's huge. But anyways, this is pretty much all I got for today. I just wanted to go ahead and um, hone in on this. But yeah, I definitely wanted to just you know clear this up because Brazil is a leading factor here for crypto adoption inside of South America. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a comment in the comment section. Hit the like button and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this financial advice. Definitely check out my other other uh, channel linked in the description, Marcel's Travels, if you want to see my travels out here in Brazil. And let me know in the comments if you want more talk about you know crypto adoption in different countries, because I'm going to be traveling to a lot of different countries. So I'll be able to let you know and fill you in on what's going on in those countries as well. Anyways, shout out to you all and like and subscribe. And as always, I'll be back with another video.